to get started, I just want to welcome y'all to this SHAC meeting. And uh, we're going to discuss today the uh, wellness plan and uh, look at the health curriculum for uh, the upcoming school year. And Ms. Summerall is going to talk to us about the wellness plan. Okay, let's start off with the fun thing. All right, the wellness plan. I guess I have to sign into my domain. Oh, let's see if I can remember it. evaluation page that we're going to score our um, wellness plan this year. It's the same as last year, not completely changes. So we want to make sure that it's still on target of where we want to be for our wellness plan it's according to safety and protection of our, our students. Anybody else need a scoring sheet? And I didn't bring any pens. I thought about it though, just went, choo, forgot it. <laughs> Uh, does everybody understand what the wellness plan is for our district? Why we have it? <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> well, like I said before, it's, it's keeping our, our kiddos safe and keeping them physically active and healthy inside and out. And um, it covers a lot of our nutrition, our nutrition goals, and uh, all the health things that we follow in our schools. All right. Um, I'm on the second part, soliciting involvement and input from federal law requires for certain stakeholders, which that is us, the SHAP committee, to be involved in the wellness plan. And it covers the, um, we, we input parents, students, and the district's food service provider, physical education teachers, school health professionals, board members, administrators, and members of the public by posting media announcements and using school messengers to solicit these meetings, which we've done already and our meetings now follow what the board our, our school board does as far as far as letting you know what the agenda is going to be about and scheduling a meeting 72 hours ahead of your the meeting time um, the responsibility for the implementation are the principals and all of us members of the admin team goals for nutrition and promotion all right federal, federal law requires that district Establish goals for nutrition promotion and its wellness policy. The district's nutrition promotion activities will encourage participation in the National School Lunch Program, the School Breakfast Program, and any supplemental food and nutrition programs offered by the district. The district will ensure that this food and every advertisement is marketed to students during the school day meet our smart snack, smart snack standards. So everybody knows what smart snacks are. That means there's the zero sugar in things that the students can buy from our vending machines or from our cafeteria. After they can't buy it during the school day, and that's what um, it is. What after midnight till the end of the school day, or thirty minutes after the school day? I think that's four o'clock. But they do not have anything with sugar that we sell here at school. <coughs> right, we work closely with the director of food services for this. We work with teachers, coaches, and admin. And uh, although the district is not required to immediately remove or replace food and beverage advertisements on items such as mini boards or other food service equipment or on uh, scoreboards or gymnasiums, the SHAC will make recommendations to replace those things as time goes on. All right, here, here's the implementation. I'm just going to go over this first one and I'll show you each one as we go through. I know you don't want to hear me read. But the goal, goal one of our wellness plan is. The district's food service staff, teachers, and other district personnel shall consistently promote healthy nutrition messages in cafeterias, classrooms, and other appropriate settings. So we need to show the students why these snacks and food are healthy for them. Uh, we're going to collect and paint the posters. Our objection, objective one is the school cafeteria will display those post, posters that promote healthy uh, eating and display other nutritional education materials. And these people, it always says, has the action steps after it. The school and community stakeholders would be the director and the maintenance group to hang the posters. Resources would be uh, <coughs> printed displays from the USDA and TDA. USDA's 
B A is the federal government, key, key A is the Texas government. Measures of success, and we can measure those by the number of meals we serve for breakfast and lunch. There's objective two, the school cafeteria administration will create an environment that encourages students to make healthy eating choices, strategically place those things so the students can see them and, and do it all over them because they want to eat them. All right. Goal two, the district shall share educational nutrition information with families and the general public to promote those healthy nutrition choices. And objective one is we promote those healthy choices by participating in that natural school lunch and breakfast week. And it gives all the steps, action steps, who are the stakeholders, what resources do we need, and our measures of success. And again, with our number of meals sold during the day at breakfast and lunch. Actions, uh, objective two, the district will promote healthy nutrition awareness on the website. So we do have that in our lunch area on the website. Goal three, ensure that food and beverage advertisements are accessible to students outside of school hours. We want them to always see those things and think immediately healthy choices. Objective one, the district will paint signage in the food and beverage area. Objective two, guidelines will be posted on the district website. And then our goals for nutrition education. We want to be teaching those kiddos in the classroom about nutrition ed and education. The district shall deliver nutrition education that fosters the adoption and maintenance of healthy eating behaviors. And the objective is students will learn those behaviors from going through the district adopted program, which right now currently is the CATCH program. It's a program that we teach in uh, elementary and middle school. And Objective two, students will have nutrition education in the classroom. Objective three, district snack and beverage machines will only sell those smart snack appropriate items. Then we go to go two, the district shall make nutrition education a district wide priority and shall integrate nutrition education into other areas of the curriculum as appropriate. Go one, information on proper nutrition education is integrated into age appropriate levels through, of course, our science and social studies. That's where a lot of ours come through at high school to those students who take those classes. Action steps, and of course, our stakeholders and resources. And let's see, there's goal three. The district shall provide professional development so the teachers and other staff responsible for the nutrition education program are adequate, adequately prepared. Objective one, help teachers. We provide PD for them. They take their, some of their uh, professional development at Region 8 to learn how to teach or to encourage kids to do the, um, the healthy snacks. And then um, we usually have a kickoff meeting at the beginning of school. I know uh, Ms. Norwood, she has a large kickoff meeting at the elementary for all the kids to participate. Objective two, teachers will be given resources from child nutrition to learn about support Learn about and support healthy eating. And then our goal is physical activity. As you know, we have a lot of physical, physical activity in our district. And I do know the elementary goes to recess and gym every day, that correct Ms. Orton? And a lot of our kids in middle school go to recess every day. I believe they do. And then high school, of course, they're very active through our hallways. <laughs> I know that Mr. Glover can go with that. Um, the district shall provide an environment that fosters safe, enjoyable, and developmentally appropriate fitness activities for all students and at age level. Districts in grades K through 6 receive 135 minutes or more each week. And objective two, the, in grades 7 and 8, they receive 30 minutes per day of moderate or vigorous structured physical activity. Objective three, grades nine through 12 receive one or more credits in education for such as athletics, band, cheerleading, or PE classes. A lot of our kids go through these extracurricular activities. Objective four, students in grade nine through 12 who do not participate in physical activity, they, they, they participate in CTE. Even though CTE is an extracurricular course that sometimes you, you call it sit and get, but many times they are up and they are doing things. Like in health, they're taking blood pressure, they're learning how to carry a 165 pound body, not mine, but uh, <laughs> a, a model, a fake model, and um, doing all kinds of different things on their feet, welding, you know, they're up and down, they're moving around. So a lot of movement throughout the day in our CTE courses. 
Goal two, the district shall provide appropriate staff development and encourage teachers to integrate curriculum <coughs> into their academic curriculum. So whenever necessary, we encourage them to move around. Get up and move around into groups, do group activities. And then uh, objective one, MBIC is a member of the Region 8 Education Service Center for Social Development Cooperative. And our teachers go there to attend staff development in their content areas. And our CTE teachers will be there all summer long learning different things. So no, there are several things going on. Objective two are the grade levels incorporate <coughs> song, a song, and dance and daily routines. Action steps, they teach you the early elementary and they sing lots of songs about picking up and moving around, uh, how to do things. Song is great for elementary kids. Goal three, the district shall make appropriate before school and after school physical activity. A lot of our kids, I know our athletics work out after school, and then some of our middle school uh, kiddos work before school. Objective one, MPIC offers students the opportunity to participate in extracurricular athletics that include sports, marching band, and cheer, and you've all seen us in action throughout the school year. Objective two is grade seven and eight participate in athletics before and after school. Goal four, they make appropriate training and other activities available to district employees. Now, I know that we have a weigh-in. At one time, Tracy, is, is, what's that called, the program? Uh, Lighten Up East Texas. Lighten Up East Texas. They, they have, have canceled it the last couple of years due to COVID. They, uh, yeah, we usually offer it when it's a normal year, so. All right. Employees are encouraged to walk or jog, and after school, you can see several employees walking around, jogging on our um, roadways. Objective two, staff are encouraged to participate in the following, in the following programs, the, the angle of blood work, flu shots, and other immunizations, Latin East Texas, and local workout camps. They're offered here in the district. And goal five, the district shall encourage parents to support their children's participation and to be active role models, include that physical activity. I know that Ms. Orwa does the turkey trot and she has a PE day during the school year. Parents join in with their student during athletic events. Not play football with them, but you know. <laughs> Goal six, the district shall encourage students and parents, staff, and community members to use the district's facilities, such as the track and the playgrounds where they can go and have, the kids can have fun while the parents walk around and exercise. NBIC allows multiple groups to use their facilities. I know that a lot of kids come up here and play basketball during the basketball season. Local citizens can walk and run on the school track. And goals for other school-based activities. The law requires that the district establish goals for other school-based activities in its wellness policy to promote student wellness, create an environment that encourages <coughs> and consistent wellness, a consistent wellness message. And then to implement those goals, the district shall allow sufficient time for students to their meals. And then play on the playground for them to get basic time. In the cafeteria, where students can send food, will have access to hand washing or sanitizing. So they usually go to the restroom before they go to the restroom. Goal five, the district shall promote positive mental health education. 
healthy educational presentations we brought to MBISC. MBI, we do that every year so that we encourage students to be healthy, have a healthy mind as well. And those, those are called ESSEEN, the Growing Up, Character Education, Hannah Speaks, Play It Safe, and uh, Suicide Prevention Programs we bring in. The counselors visit with students one on one and offer support to students. The nutrition guidelines. We participate in the U.S. Department of Agriculture's USDA Child Nutrition Program. That's all I need to say about that because they're very strict on their program rules. Um, foods and beverages sold. Like I said, uh, they're called smart snacks where there's no sugar inside the, the snacks. And there are exceptions for fundraisers, so if you see our FFA and some of our other kiddos selling the meat sales and the cookie sales and all the, the many things that we sell, we do that off campus, it's supposed to be the off campus or after school. When they're at school, they're supposed to be learning. All right, uh, here are the exception days for all of our campuses. There are six exception days for each campus. Foods and beverages are provided by, if a grandparent wants to bring cupcakes, sure, they can bring cupcakes. That is a law that was changed later on after the law said that we couldn't do anything. They changed it to the cupcake law. That's what they called it before. Uh, measuring compliance with nutrition guidelines. We measure compliance within those nutrition guidelines from the Department of um, Agriculture, Texas Department of Agriculture. There's your snacks again. They can bring their own snacks to school. But they have to be sugar-free and they're not going to, they can't share with anyone if they are, if they do have sugar. If parents bring snacks to school, they must be individually sealed or wrapped so that we, I, I, I know that only she doesn't want snacks. So they need to be sealed because of the COVID and all the things that have gone on in our world the last couple of years. Policy and plan evaluation. We evaluate at least every three years, but I would like to do it every year just so that everybody's Everybody knows about our plan and knows what it's for. And if there's any suggestions that need to be made, we want to know those. There's your public notification. And records retention. We do have to uh, re uh, keep these records. And I'll keep those in my office. All right. Wow. What a wellness plan. <laughs> so if you didn't hear something in there, let me know. I may need to go back and evaluate this, add or take away. Um, if you see the scorecard, there are each section. Um, it can be outstanding, proficient, needs improvement, or no implementation. If you'll score those <coughs> goals through each one of those and then return it, I'll, I'll add them up and see how we did this year. No, you don't have to sign it, it can be anonymous. Mm -hmm. And I can take them when you're finished. Are we just doing the goals or are we? Uh, each goal, yeah. Each goal. Each goal. Yeah. Each goal. Yeah. Each goal. yeah. Yes, I think there's some on the back as well. Yeah. Those were the. Um, I did like food, everything, food, 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 Next, we're going to talk about our what we've learned at our uh, 
we had a, a viewing at Region 8 earlier this year, I guess it was in February, and it's the new adoption for the health techs that have come, come along this year and we put in place next year. And they let us look at a lot of different curriculum books, resources, and we found some that we really liked. The first one we saw, and, and Laura, you might want to mention what you saw in that, uh, is it Quaver? Yes, Quaver. Quaver. What, what are the things that you saw in Quaver that you liked? Uh, it was so interactive that everything was online. They had all kinds of different games that they had, and they had all the teeth in there, and everything was aligned with it, and it had, you know, if you were doing this, they put it right there together, and you could take it and put it straight into your Edgeforia. It already had songs, it had demonstrations, and it was all <coughs> online, which I loved. What I have right now is in a box with little index cards. <laughs> so it was amazing. <coughs> And what you have right now is the catch program. And they don't have anything put together except for hands-on things. It doesn't have anything online that is worth showing in the catch program. So, because when he showed us the catch program online, it was not very, it was like they were way behind the other groups. So we wanted you to do something that's more interactive with the little ones that get them going and get them active and get them thinking about wellness and health. So if we approve that thing, will we change our plan? Because our plan has catch in it. We'll yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, um, we, we don't have the books in house right now, but we have a lot of brochures from the, the, <coughs> the companies, and we are going to have to order those to be able to look at them on first. So we may not want to adopt it today. We might want to come back before the May school board meeting and look at that. And they have. They have one book that has everything in it. It does have the sex education in it, and I think that's a lot of what we're kind of concerned about. But we looked through it, and it looked it looked like a very a common way to introduce it that was not so makes you feel uncomfortable. If that makes sense. Um, it had everything together in one book, like with the catch program in middle school. It's not it's not in there. They don't have that. So we have to call in another group to teach the education through esteem. And Tracy has esteem booklets over here that you can look through as well. Um, but if, if anybody has any ideas or anything that you've heard or you might want to suggest, we definitely can get those books here and look at them before we make a final adoption. But these are the, the, um, the curriculum that we like the most. And I think it did have the CPR part in yes, that that's book right. that has to be covered for the high school graduation. Is that what you're looking at? Something that would replace the esteem? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it would only be like for 8th grade health, is that right? Yes, it only go up to 8th grade. Yes. But it covers the sex education and the CPR. So it wouldn't have to be used at the high school level? No. It's just an 8th grade. Right. Just now, we could something for high school if you yeah. wanted to do something and continue. I'd love to get the CPR done in eighth grade. Right, yeah. but I mean, I'm talking about the human sexuality mm -hmm. part. If you wanted to continue on in something in high school, you could look at yeah. part of the esteem program or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, if y'all want to take this time and come look at these things, we, we have two copies. But we have, I have Goodhart Wilcox here, and I also have Quaver. What are you here? There's lessons at a glance. There's a curriculum map for Quaver. So, so the Quaver is oh. elementary and middle. It does nothing for high school. So, and then the other. So the crazy thing is, just implement that as in the Quaver. So that satisfies all the requirements. So we like we don't have to do it. I'm sure it's very good. Right, right. So we don't have to do that. They can get this done. They can get this done. They can get that's new. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and but we don't have to necessarily adopt something for not for twelve. Let me know. Well, let me know. We can go to the mall and see what it tells us. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions? I know this was fun and exciting. Shack is always fun. <laughs> any comments? Some things we need to do better. Some things we need to make changes. Uh, I just would say on the sex education piece, that would be really important. Yes. To figure out something for the high school. Yes. You're exactly mm -hmm. right. So. Yep. We will look into that and see where we need to go with that. And then we're, we'll, we'll get these books in, in house and let y'all go through them and look at them. We'll, we'll try to get another meeting before our board meeting in May and let you come look at them and go through them more, more thoroughly than what you can here. We're just going to magazine. Who ultimately decides? Uh, Shaq makes recommendations. Yeah, Jennifer, from purchasing the Quaver Music program, they will give you a trial login. Mm -hmm. So if we want to ask for that so before we meet again, so people can actually see what it looks like because it's really looking at it on paper versus in action there's a big difference exactly exactly and we saw it in action but nobody else has so i don't know or you, you want to uh, oh i got a free trial and okay. i did that and mine expired but did you say she signed up yeah she signed up so now she's got another 30 days if you want to share and i shared that. my information which she did she sent it to me and yeah, and I I went through it and I looked at different stuff and I was like, oh, I'm going to use this. I'm like, all right, right now, it's, I'm going to go ahead and try some of it out and see what they think. So and when her drugs out hot, now yeah, we'll get a 30 day. We'll, we'll look at yeah. it thoroughly. <laughs> it's very user friendly too. Okay. It's very user friendly. Good. Good deal. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for coming today. Tracy, do you have anything else to say? No. Thank you all. I appreciate everyone showing up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>